Living Regalia is made possible in part by Bernina of Oklahoma City, providers of quality, precision sewing machines. And by War Child Society, designers of native apparel, t-shirts, decals, and more. And by generous contributions from viewers like you. We are back, ladies and gentlemen, with another episode of Make Your Regalia with me, Joaquin Lone Lodge, based here in Concha, Oklahoma. I've got an exclusive show for you to do. I've got none other than a Cheyenne and a Rapho show today. I've got none other than Primor Fancy Dancer, Mr. Dwight White Buffalo. How are you doing today, Uncle? I'm doing pretty good, and uh, I'm glad to be here today to give you a demonstration on how to make a rocker. Yeah, today we got a pretty good show for you today. We're going to do a men's southern style uh, rocker. Uh, this is iconic for our style of dance. Uh, I've had one pretty much all the time I've grown up. And uh, it's very iconic because what it does is it keeps in time with the drum. It moves back and forth. And this comes back, you know, back from our older ways as far as uh, our, our using these eagle feathers. A long time ago, we used to acquire these from going to the battle and stuff. And we still like to use these ones and, you know, adorn them on our, our actual head roaches. Uh, this style, you know, is different from the spinner, which goes back and forth and catches wind, you know, emulates two warriors battling. This one, uh, for our style, keeps us in time with the drum. And one cool part about it is that, you know, if you start to get tired and stuff, you can a lot of see a lot of the fancy dancers, you know, it'll start to slow down. Um, but, you know, if you're really good in shape, you know, you continuously make this uh, rocker go pretty fast. Like that right, Uncle? And, uh, basically, uh, you have to keep in time with the drum, and uh, this will keep, uh, look like you're going fast all the way through. Right, right. And the crazy part is, you know, this is a very, very simple, like, mechanical engineered device. But the, pull, uh, the hard part about it is that to get the balance of it right, the top uh, weight and the lower weight just right, just for it to rock uh, perfectly, is kind of a hard thing to do. And Dwight here, you know, he's done it for so many years. He's got a perfect balance. And the cool part is that I actually received one of, one of these Dwight White Buffalo original like, uh, rockers here. I appreciate that, Uncle. You know, I've used it for so many years. Uh, this is my go-to. You know, I, I love it, you know, because it continuously rocks. I have no problems with it. And once again, you know, I want to thank you for like, letting me get one of these gifts from you. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, uh, so today what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to construct one of these uh, rockers. He's going to show his trade secrets. These are ones he doesn't really divulge, but for the show, he's actually going to give it out to the audience. So for all you fancy dancers out there, please tune in. This is going to be a good one. So now what we're going to do is we're going to get right into the construction of this men's fan sense southern rocker. You know, like what I said, you know, this is a pretty simple device, you know, it goes back and forth. We have rubber bands that actually hold it together, like actually give it the bounce. But if you see, it goes back and forth. This gives it, you know, the timing of the drum uh, movement. And the faster the drum goes, the faster this is going to go. Um, you know, I don't even know how fast this thing would go. Probably a clock at maybe 120 maybe. And, you know, it depends on how much nitrous we got on there, so, you know. But uh, Dwight here is going to go right into the construction and show you how to actually construct it. Um, the first part is creating the base. And what we would kind of do is kind of like a little oval base, right? Yeah, this is the base of the, the rocker here. Mm -hmm. and it's coming from a hardback book. So you, what you're looking for is pretty much some hard, like, uh, um, um, cardboard, right? Yeah, something that will keep it the bottom part stable and as moment I'm gonna cut it out and this base is it's not really that big I would say maybe about four inches and you know from the uh, the bottom it kind of like bends out and it's kind of for the top of the head part of the roach and what you can do is you're gonna stack it with another piece right yeah. okay so what we're going to do is make two different pieces and we're going to put them together, but kind of stack them that way it gives it more stability. So what he's doing now is just tracing it out and just kind of getting this like, little base together. So what book, what book did you read or not read? <laughs> this is a handbook on how to use a fancy dance. Oh, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> that was the, the master's like book right there. Gonna have to, I'm going to have to burn it after. <laughs> that was trade secrets right there, the black book. Or is that the black book of addresses? Because I heard you just recently got married, isn't that right, Uncle? 
I'll be getting married. Oh, okay. So that, that was actually his black address book. In <laughs> January. <laughs> so what he's doing now, he's going to actually put these two uh, bases together. And how are you, we going to do that? We're just going to electric tape it together? Or? Yeah, that's... That's right. <laughs> oh, duct tape, I mean electric tape them together. Yeah. And this will keep the base together, you know, it's like giving it like a stability. And when the, when the motion of the rocker goes back and forth, it, it, you know, it gives it, you know, like um, holds it together. Now, I know that, you know, you made my rocker. Um, who was the first person that made your rocker, like when you were like younger? Norman New Rider. Oh, okay. Now, you know, growing up through my life, I always used to watch, you know, the older men's uh, Southern Fancy. Uh, the great Billy McClellan, you know, he had a really wicked rocker, uh, you know, like uh, some other ones out there. You know, Henry McClellan, those guys always had good rockers. Um, George Alexander, R.G., um, you know, that was kind of the thing, you know, like growing here in Oklahoma, that's, no one really had too many spinners out there. Everyone just had rockers, you know, that's all I could ever see. You know, like, you know, then of course, you know, there was you. And I remember going to Red Earth and watching these things, you know, like when people dance, these things going 100 miles an hour, keeping in time with the drum, making everything just look flawless, too. Well, this, uh, this um, rocker is based on uh, Billy McClellan's uh, style. style. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much what I got it from. Okay. Oh, and uh, Joe Boyney, too. He had a really wick wicked rocker, too, back in the day. He still does, actually. So now, like, since we got the base plate done, um, you kind of like measuring, like, what, midway for, like, uh, to put those uh, marks and stuff? Yeah, it's uh, pretty much you got to use your base to mark everything. Everything's going to be based on this, on this thing right here. All right, here's come where the, this part right here is going to be measured because it's going to be have to be centered based on this the width of this. So now what we've got done so far, we've got the base of the rocker. We've got uh, another base. It's kind of like a counterweight, almost like a treble leger. Uh, this part right here is kind of uh, significant because if you were to drill it just off a little bit, the counterweight of it, it's not going to actually rock. So the thing is, Dwight, being the master that he is, he knows exactly where to like drill without even marking it. He just feels it, and he can actually sense it by using the force. But somehow, when he does it, it rocks. I've done it before, and I kind of off-drilled it, and mine didn't work as well. That's why, you know, I'm glad he actually made me one. But you know, from him so making so many rockers that you know he knows exactly where to uh, um, drill. I believe it's kind of like right at the base of the bottom, right? Yes, right here. Uh huh. On the bottom of the base, you pretty much have to put an X on it because that's the center of uh, of your weight. Yeah, your counterweight. Yeah, everything has to be centered. That way, it'll have uh, everything will be have equal amount of weight on the top and the bottom of your. If you get it wrong, just a light, slight little miscalculations, it just won't seem to rock right for some reason. You know, you can put a lot of weight on the feathers, but if you do that, the very tips, sometimes you can damage the feathers, you can snap them back and forth. But, you know, like I said, Dwight's done this so many times that, you know, he knows exactly where to drill. So go ahead and try it out and see. Here goes nothing. This is, ladies and gentlemen, he's using the actual force. All right, so there we go. With the power of that, we got their, our hole drilled, um, perfectly balanced and centered and ready to rock now. Now what he's gonna do is he's gonna drill some more like uh, uh, holes. These are for the, the wires to hold the actual feathers together. And what we're gonna do is he's gonna show you actually how to uh, crimp them and show them how to put it together. And this is uh, this part right here at the very top. That's where we're going to connect the feathers and actually intertwine it and whatnot. And there's another one at the very bottom. This is the ones where we're going to. Uh, it's going to place two wires that come out, and the rubber bands are actually going to feed off of it.
This is where the uh, the feathers on top are gonna be at. And pretty much you gotta, uh, sometimes you don't get it perfectly right at the first time, but most of the time you do. Okay, so now what he's doing is he's bending the wires back and forth and uh, he's gonna crisscross it and then what he's gonna do is he's gonna twist it. This gives it like stability and will actually hold the rocker feathers like straight up and down. Um, this is kind of like you have to do this because you know it, if not it, it's, it, the feathers will actually flop back and forth. So what you really want to do is you want, really want to get a tight seat on this. So if, if you see ladies and gentlemen he's actually going to twist this as hard as he can. This will give it you know a tightness at the base and at the top. So now, ladies and gentlemen, what we've done is Dwight's already drilled a hole through here. He's actually gone through with the wire, come up through the top on both sides, uh, made a little twist, come through here, and made a U. These two, this U right here is significant because this is where the actual feathers are going to go on. Um, usually what we use is what, electric tape to attach these feathers? Yeah. Yeah, sometimes. Because it's, it's a, lot, a whole lot easier to actually do electrical tape. And then at the bottom, he's done the exact same thing. He's actually gone through here, uh, made a little twist at the bottom, uh, come out here. Now these two wires right here that are coming out, these are what's going to go and ricochet off the like uh, your, uh, your rubber bands. This is giving it the speed back and forth and giving it like velocity going back and forth. And then we have one more that's going through here. Uh, this is going to be the base at the very bottom. Remember, this is a very important part because if you drill rail at the bottom, this is where you get your counterweight. And of course, you know that's you know like that's where we get like the the weight, the top heavy part for the, uh, the rocker go back and forth, right? Yeah. So if what he's going to do is he's going to take his base that he's already pre-made, and he's kind of measuring out. And what he's going to do is he's going to bend it down and then he's going to attach it to the base. He's going to drill a couple holes into the base and then uh, push the wire into it and then loop it around and secure it. What are you looking for? Oh. <laughs> What you see in here, ladies and gentlemen, is a powwow competition dance. You'll see the difference between the northern and the southern war dancers. The nor northern war dancers will usually have spinners for their top eagle feathers. Uh, these eagle feathers come from like the tail feathers of the, uh, the eagles. These are actually golden eagles because you can see the difference between the black and the white. The northern war dancer usually will have these spinners and what happens is when they dance the wind catches them. They kind of flicker back and forth and it looks almost like images of two warriors going to battle against each other. The southern war dancer has what's known as the rocker. These rockers go back and forth, uh, keeping in time with the drum. A lot of the times the warriors, these uh, dancers will actually decorate the top of the eagle feathers, sometimes matching in the regalia. A lot of times, you know, reflective tape is used. This way, when it rocks back and forth or it spins, you'll see like a shine, kind of a gleam going back and forth. Uh, this is kind of like just kind of what's grown up and has evolved to what it is today. A lot of these times, uh, these rockers, uh, it's, a, it's a good determination when you're judging because uh, when they do go back and forth, they keep in time with the drum. The faster the song, the faster the rocker is going to go. A lot of times you can actually judge these dancers just by the dance styles and the speed of their rockers. You can see like who's been working out and who hasn't just because like the rockers will start to slow down the faster the song. White has actually pierced the base of, the, of the, our, our actual rocker. He's gone with uh, the two like uh, um, wires and going through the base at the bottom, come around the bottom, come around, and then he's wrapped around the top and he cinched it. This gives it the stability and actually holds the rocker together. Uh, you know, now it's 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 almost finally done. You know, we got like two more things that he needs to do. 
Uh, but right now the base of it is done, so like your little treble jet, your counterweight, will be able to rock back and forth. All now we have to do is uh, create two more bases for our rubber bands. That way, like uh, the two ends of these uh, uh, wires that we have coming out the base will actually ricochet off of it. You know, that way it will give stability and have it be able to rock back and forth. Once again, we are here at uh, Oklahoma Indian Nations, based here in Concho, Oklahoma. I've got another, none other than Marty Thurman, one of my brothers I grew up with all the way through the Oklahoma Powell circuit. Marty, how's it going? Going pretty good. How you doing? Oh, pretty good, man. It's good seeing you again. You know, like, I want to kind of tell the people out here, you know, like, uh, a little bit of this, uh, your style of grass dance. You know, like, I always seen you know, growing up, you know, you always had, had like, the kind of the older style, you know, grass dance. Um, kind of tell me a little bit about your, your ribbon and how you do that and stuff. Well, my ribbon that I have on here, the stories that have been shared with me of how, how it originated, you know, there's two different stories that I've heard, and one of the stories is, you know, a long time ago that uh, they would dance and they would put uh, tufts of grass within their belt, you know, to pass the time as they prepared the dance grounds. And that's kind of what it resembles. A lot of times you've heard stories of uh, the, the swaying grass, you know, that's what we mimic as we dance. But also, too, you know, a long time ago I've heard that they would put uh, scalps on their belts in different parts and they would dance, you know, with those scalps, those hair, that hair. So that's just a little bit of, you know, about how, you know, what these represent for or me. Or your girlfriend's hair. Uh, or, yeah, your girlfriend's hair, too. <laughs> Ex-girlfriend. Ex-girlfriend's yeah. hair. Even better. Yeah. <laughs> Mother-in-law's, too. You never yeah. know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know, but this style right here, this kind of like more old style, this is what, cotton material, right? Yeah, this is all cotton material. You can pick it up at Walmart, Joann's, Hancock's. Hobby Lobby, you can pick it up, which is about all kinds of places. That's the only the best material, you know, is the best you can find at Walmart is the dollar bins right there. <laughs> the dollar bins. You know, that's you know like where I usually find most of my stuff. But um, how do you tack this down? Then, as far as like on here, this is all sewn down, just uh, regular straight stitch. You know, it's um, pretty simple. You know, when it comes on the bolt, it comes you know with the, uh, with the fold already. So you know, we've cut it in a certain way to where we, that fold is where exactly where we sew. All right, on right on. Now, do you cut the strips afterwards or you cut it before? Yeah, I usually cut them either before or after. It depends on if we're on the road, if we're traveling, if we have time. Everything that we usually do is always last minute. Exactly, like four in the morning and stuff yep. like that. <laughs> it looks good though, brother. You know, no, like you. you know, once again, you know, Marty Thurman. Uh, what are your tribes? I'm uh, enrolled Sac and Fox. I'm also Comanche, uh, Shawnee, and Delaware also. Yeah, and you reside in Shawnee, Oklahoma, right? Yeah, Shawnee, Oklahoma. That's right. You know, once again, you know, thank you again, brother. Thanks yeah, for coming thank on you, the brother. show. Thank you for thinking of me. Appreciate it. Always good seeing you, man. Yeah, likewise. Thanks again for all the viewers out there. I uh hope. -huh. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you and I want to thank Marty out there, Marty Thurman, my brother from the Sac Fox Nation, for uh, jumping in there and giving me an interview at the uh, Oklahoma Indian Nations this year. Um, while we're doing that, uh, Dwight was here really hammering this thing out, you know, getting this uh, uh, rocker almost uh, built. Uh, it's gotten down to the, like, the final two pieces that he needs to do, and that's creating the like, two little bases for your rubber bands, isn't that right? Yeah. Yeah. These are basically... Uh just another piece of two more wires, right? Yeah. You know, I, I've seen this before, you know, like uh, Dwight and I, you know, we, we always, I've always had a rubber band like base. I've even seen people actually have springs before. Have you seen that? Yeah, this is, that was the older way. Right, right. I've even seen the base actually be the spring itself. And then it's kind of like, it was kind of a little weird teeter-totter. So there, there's a lot of different styles and I guess, you know, different mechanisms you could use. But I don't know, Telltale, this is the one that's always seemed to work, right? Yeah, this basically you can't go wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Idiot proof. <laughs> so what he's doing is he's intertwining the wire at the base and he's going to come around the, well, the bottom and uh, come around the tops and uh, wrap it around and then he's going to like make like little two little poles that way you can put like his rubber bands in there and that way the the, the other two poles from your little uh, counterweight is going to ricochet off of it about how fast do you think this one will go uh 
We'll just have to see. And we'll just have to wait and see. <laughs> yeah. There might be a winner. And we might have a winner here. But who are the people that you made these for? Well, the ones that been beat me. All <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> I think I think we need to start putting like a higher price on these things, you know. But it's all good, you know, because you know, like, what I feel is, you know, I've had my day in dancing and stuff, and you know, like, I'm just ready to give back, and it's kind of what the show is about, is, you know, giving people the opportunity out there to pick up this style of dance or a style of dance, and you know, and take it off, you know, and hopefully, you know, they can do and travel, you know, places that you know, dance took me. That's really the purpose of this show. And he's almost got this bin. This is kind of a kind of a hard bend for you people out there. You kind of be get real careful. Uh, you know, be careful with your hands and your tools. Just like Red Sky, you know, like uh, you can actually jack up your hands and pierce yourself. So you just gotta watch out when you're bearing these wires because these things are sharp sometimes. Yeah, the base of your uh, should be uh, thick. That way it won't uh, break mm. during competition. It's so Wild Dwight's working on this rocker over here. We're going to check in with Jason Goodflanke over at Indian Nations. So we are back here at Oklahoma Indian Nations, based here in Concha, Oklahoma. I've got none other than Jason uh, Lightfoot, um, one of my good friends here from the Powells. You know, Jason. Um, of course, you know you're a straight dancer. I've seen you dance for many years. You know, um, you know what does straight dance actually mean to you? Well, uh, Junior, I've been dancing for a long time. You know, since I was a little kid growing up. You know, and then uh, our folks, you know, uh, raised us up this way. You know, and. And uh, we really don't know it any other way, you know. It's just, it's just what we've been doing all our lives, you know. And just like how you see all these uh, little kids out here dancing, you know, that's how long we've been dancing too, you know. Yeah. And uh, it's not really, a, it's not really a, a hobby, or it's just something we do during the weekend, you know. It's, 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 uh, it's our way of life, you know. Yeah. It's how we live, you know. And so. this comes back from you know your families, you know, like uh, your lineage and stuff. You know, this style of straight dance has probably like uh, been from your families and stuff growing up, right? Yeah, yeah. My uh, matter of fact, my uh, great grandfather was a straight dancer. My grandfather was. My uncle was, you know, and then myself, you know, then goes down to my sonny boy too, you know. All right. So it's about the five, close six generations, you know, of straight dancers, you know. That's awesome. So. And of course, you know, you're gonna have, you know, like your offspring start dancing straight dance, right? You bet, you bet. You know, he's he's already going for it right now. You know, he's contesting right now. So that's keen, man. It's keen. Yeah. So like, uh, tell me a little bit about you know the outfit with this bandoliers and stuff. How um, how does that made? Uh, these we usually we use the uh, sinew thread, you know, that goes through there. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we use these mescal beads here. And you can usually find them down in the south around Texas, you know, and then and then uh, just the regular bones, you know, beads here, you know, just strung up, you know. Right, right. Now I have, I kind of got a funny story. Like one time, one of my uncles came over, and uh, he thought these mescal beads, you know, they kind of look almost like that candy that you get during Christmas time. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> he was asking my mom, you know, was like, hey, can I get some of these? Because I'm gonna make a sash. And my mom was like, that's just candy. So, <laughs> yeah. So you gotta really watch them, you know. Like if they taste funny, you know, they're they're mescal. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You probably need to uh, boil them up first before right, you try to right. eat them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but yeah, Jason, uh, thanks again, you know, for coming on the show. You know, yeah, appreciate no problem, it. Man. You know, once again, I want to thank all the viewers out there. You know, now you're gonna be world famous from this. You know, yeah. appreciate yeah, it, man. Thank oh, you. thank you again. Yeah, thank you. I hope. Oh. Yeah. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are back and we are finished. Uh, what Dwight has done is like, he actually drilled two holes at the base right here. And then he made um, almost like a prong shape out of the wire, uh, piercing it through at the bottom, and then coming out around the both sides and coming around the sides, bending it into an S right here and coming out the sides on both sides. This will give us a base for like uh, our rubber bands. So now all we've got to do is attach the rubber bands here and then from there it'll give it ricochet on our little like uh, uh, counterweight at the bottom uh, going back and forth. He's also done it at the very back too, doing the same kind of like little like uh, prong shape going around the back, come around the tops and come up the top. And what we do is attach the, uh, the rubber bands there and then that'll give it the ricochet on the back end. 
So pretty much this thing is almost pretty much done, right? Yeah. All I have to do now is just put the rubber bands on. Right, right. And you always want to change these out. Like uh, I would check them maybe every other power, you know. Um, uh, they tend to wear out pretty good, you know, from, sun. yeah, the sun, sweat, and, you know, it's just, uh, just, you know, the friction back and forth when we knock them out. So there we have it. We have our base, we have our rubber bands, and this thing is ready to rock. And that's kind of what we do is, you know, when we first build these things is, you know, you kind of want to fine tune it, you know, like play with it here and there, kind of like put a uh, couple rubber bands on there, take a couple rubber bands off, but just kind of get the feel of it and that way we could kind of fine tune on how it rocks and stuff. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we, we're going to kind of like look at like uh, Dwight and my rocker. You know, of course, Dwight, you know, his is, he took a little bit more extra time and adorned it with some beadwork. Um, you know, did you bead this yourself? Yeah, I beat it. This, the base of this is actually, uh, it's old. It's probably like 30 years old. Yeah. But it still wins, so that's why I keep on using it, right? <laughs> but, you know, he, he actually beaded this, took some little bit more time out. And what size beads did you use on here? Thirteens. Oh, man, those are some small ones. Me, on the other hand, I, I don't have the time. And, you know, I always go back to, you know, what's true and what's, like, good for me. I use tape, you know. I, these are all my, you know, my, my signature tapes that I get from, like, my sign stores and stuff. So that's where I get all my fluorescence and stuff. But, you know, take it and, you know, do whatever you want with your rocker, you know, color coordinate with your outfit. You can pretty much match it just to whatever you want to do with it. But if you see, I just taped it, kind of put like a little lodge design in there for my last name, Lone Lodge. And, you know, this is kind of a, kind of give you an idea of how you want to decorate these. A lot of people actually will decorate the top feathers and stuff like that uh, to give it a little bit of, you know, a little extra gleam, you know, stuff where it goes back and forth. But, you know, this is just kind of an idea that, you know, like me and Dwight have. He beads his, you know, I kind of taped mine. But just to kind of a little decorating it and stuff. But, you know, the other one we've got, you know, it's ready, it's ready to go. Ready to rock and ready for sale, you know, ready for someone to pick it up and decorate it and ready for it to hit some Powell trails. So now we've come to the conclusion of our Southern Men's Fancy Dance Rocker. We got here, thank you again, my Uncle Dwight, White Buffalo. Thank you again for coming on the show. Yeah, I'm glad to uh, show you a demonstration on how to make a Southern Fancy Rocker. Yeah, so all you uh, Fancy Dance out there, you got some good information on how to actually make one of these from the legend himself. I uh, wanted to thank everyone out there for tuning in. Um, of course, powwows.com for rebroadcasting it. Uh, for everyone out there in Powwow land, you know, I'll see you soon. Hetchin' on Bethany.